Hello everyone, and welcome to our Blackmagic Ursacini 12K LF first look. And I have my amazing friend, Tor Johansson here. Great How to be doing? here. Thank yeah. you. Awesome. And we are going to dive deep into every aspect of this camera. Now we're gonna compare it a little bit to the Mini Pro, just because that was your first 12K. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we have this, uh, this new version, 12K, which we've been doing a lot of tests that I cannot wait to share with you. And this image is pretty phenomenal. I'm really loving this camera. This is why I'm actually giving you this first look. Excellent. Okay, what are we gonna do now? We're gonna do boot up timer. Let's do okay. it. Okay, all right, so we're gonna start with our mini. Okay, this is old. How many years old is this? It's about four years now. Four years, okay. So I'm gonna set my uh, little timer here. So this is the Ursa Mini Pro 12K. Ursa Mini Pro 12K, all right. I'm gonna hit the button and this at the same time. So here we go. I'm gonna start this and turn it. Three, two, one, go. Picture? Up. Six seconds. Almost seven seconds. Not too bad. Okay. We'll turn this one off. We'll move this one over. And now we'll move on to our Ursa Cine. Resetting. Yep. Three, two, one, go. Fans and picture. Boom. Eight seconds. All right, so the Mini was basically one and a quarter second uh, oh. faster, but uh, not bad on the boot up time at all. I mean, the days of yore of red, how long does a Sony Venice take to boot up? 20 seconds, 30 seconds, mm -hmm. so this is great. I, I just love to, to kind of play with the boot up timer because I've had so many situations where the director's like, hey, we gotta go. And I'm like, oh, battery, uh, we're hitting it. We roll, roll. And the thing's like, uh, go. So uh, this is a very quick uh, boot up. So that's awesome. All right, now we're gonna move on to the weight. So I'm gonna pop this battery off. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now we will set the scale. Turn this on. Well, this is with the antennas. Oh, you want me to take those <laughs> off? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna put this on and it's coming up at eight pounds. So that's what our uh, Ursa Cine 12K is. And now we will compare it with our Ursa Mini. Should be closer to five and a half, maybe five and three fourths. Uh, six. Six point one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So two pound difference. Now let's measure this thing. Legacy grip. These guys got it going on. Okay. Uh, all right. We're going to measure the width of this baby, which is about five and a half inches wide. Here, I'll do it for you, Jarrell. So we're at about five and a half inches wide. Mm -hmm. We're looking at five and a three quarter high and full length. We're looking at about nine and three quarter inches. Okay, that's the Ursa Mini. Now we'll bring in the Ursa Cine. So a little bit bigger. Width wise, we're looking at six and a quarter inches height about six and a quarter and length is ten and a half inches yeah so it's a little you can kind of see uh the size difference here um just playing out so you have basically, uh, you can see that one and a half inch each direction and, uh, but you know, two pounds more. Yep. Got an additional screen. We've got the media module inside. Right. Yes. The media mo module is a big dock that's here. And tell me about these cards. You got eight yep. terabytes is what this baby's into. That's right. I'll wow. That, that's what I'm talking about. We're going to need some 12K 
Look at that. That is beautiful. And uh, we've been, you know, putting these things in and downloading all the footage that we're going to dive into so you can really see uh, the power of being a, it was so funny when we had three to one compression, we put the eight, eight terabyte in and yeah. how much time did we have? Uh, depending on the compression level and the frame size, it was like 12 hours when we got to the 18, 18 to one, to one. but then, then we were down like, to like seven hours. Yeah. Wow. But like, Impressive. This, this is so fast too. It writes at six gigabytes per second, not bits, six gigabytes wow. sustained. There's nothing that this camera can throw at it as far as high, high frame rate, minimal compression to make it drop. That is Unlike fantastic. some other media we know about, you know, sometimes yeah. you get drop frames. <laughs> exactly. All right. So now uh, let's talk uh, black shading. In regards to our Ursa Cine, do we have to black shade this at all? No, we, we did with the 4.6K sensors, okay. but not with the 12K four years ago and not with this one as, as well. Okay, so no black shading is required. Yep. That's awesome. What about pixel mapping? Does this pix do we need to pixel map? You don't need to. If by chance years down the road you do get a bad pixel, we can clear it at the Fremont factory for service. Okay. Um, but we are looking into something like that to do in camera. Okay, great. All right. And of course, Resolve has a hot pixel removal tool. Absolutely. Like who yeah. wants to do it in post, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's good because uh, like when we boot up the Buranos, it always tells you it has a pixel mapping yep. thing that yep. you uh, can either engage or you can bypass. Yep. Uh, but it's, it's nice to know that uh, we're always trying to you know, get the cleanest yeah, image yeah. possible. Yeah, I think they were the first to do that, and I think others will follow. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, that was a whole new technology. When I booted the thing up, I'm like, uh, I was talking with Katie, and I'm like, what is this, yeah. you know? Yep. But no, that's great. Okay, so let's talk, um, how does this record, and how long is the recording times? Now, is this something that we go to our calculator on? Yeah, because it's a lot of numbers to figure in your head, and I was never good at math. Right. But so you have your frame size, whether it's 12K, 8K, 4K. So if we hit 12K mm -hmm. and we say we're doing 16 and then by so are nine. You, are you open gate or are you doing a crop inside the sensor? Like 16 by nine is a slight crop. Okay. And then it's your frame rate. Right. And then your compression level. Okay. And then how does that. And if you can do all that in your head, then you got one, <laughs> one up on me. So where does this show me how. Uh, so if I. So you got to choose your compression. So okay. let's say eight to one. Uh, so 24 frames per second, we're doing 385 megabytes per second, and you get 5.8 hours on an 8 terabyte module. Oh my God. Okay, now if I go to 3 to 1, that's 2.2 hours. 2.2. Okay, if I go to 12 to 1, 8.6, and this is what we were looking at, boom, 13 18. hours for that, right? More, yeah. For 18 to 1, and that's at 12K, okay? Yep. So now if we go to 3 to 1 and we go to 9K, 9K Select. is a Super 35 crop, just so you know. Right. All the other the sizes, 8K and 4K, are full sensor. Okay, and then we'd go with our 16 by 9, and that's uh, telling us. So this is something that's on the Blackmagic uh, website? It is. And how and do I access that? Uh, just going to blackmagicdesign.com, and okay. then clicking on our camera, and it's down in the, in the feed there. Great. So this is something that's super helpful, because you're always trying to manage <clears throat> data, uh, what the bit rates are, what your what you're going to be, what your storage. Um, you know, I, I it's like we were just recently dealing with just only 512 gigabytes cards. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking eight terabytes and a 16 terabyte option. Oh wow! Okay, but just so I, so I mentioned that you can do all this in camera. So if you set it up in camera, it's going to tell you how much time you have on your media. Yes, absolutely. This is kind of like a you know previs. You know, you're figuring exactly, out pre what are we going to need for the shoot. Exactly. Yeah. This would be how I would prep with my first AC yep. and my DIT, yep. so we can manage mm -hmm. uh, our media and how much we needed and all that kind of good sure. stuff. Great. So that's awesome that we can go to that. Okay. So let's uh, let me grab my little phone. I will say that one of the issues with the first 12K is a lot of people were dropping frames because 12K raw has a high bit rate. Yes. And CFast media doesn't always get up to 500 megabytes or so. So it's very likely you could drop frames if you're doing like a 3 to 1, 12 to 1, 12K uh, recording. And so that was like the number one thing we had problems with in support. So we came out with our own media that has zero issues Smart. with drop frames. Smart. Now, what does that drop frame look like? 
you can choose to either just notify you while you're recording that you dropped a frame or stop recording. Right. Um, most people want to stop because yeah. they don't want to miss any frames. Gotcha. Okay. Sounds great. So we've kind of, you know, talked about the recording time, which obviously when you got that app and all this stuff, you, you're, you're, you know, you're off to the races with this, but let's talk bit rate because when you were talking about the bit rate numbers of this camera, it boggled my mind mm -hmm. because it was so much larger than most right, of right. our, you know, Venice, yeah. Airy, Red. What is the bit rate? Well, Blackmagic has always been about giving a, a hefty, meaty file to post so they can really work with it. You know, the colorist wants all that information to control the color and the luminance levels. So we never want to shortchange the post workflow. We want to okay. give them as much as possible. But having said that, Blackmagic RAW is very efficient and we do have levels of compression all the way up to 18 to one that are very clean. And I always encourage people to do a test for yourself and then pixel peep. And we did that today. Yes. Yeah, and we'll be, we're gonna be diving in that with our senior colorist, Dave Cole uh, from Photochem, where we're gonna go through all these amazing tests that we've already shot. Uh, and we're gonna literally dive deep into this and all the compressions and the ISOs and skin tones, as well as, oh, and then the over and under test, which mm -hmm. is our icing on the cake, mm -hmm. which you'll see at the end. But yeah, people are afraid of compression, but in this case, Blackmagic RAW is super clean and it's an efficient codex. So I say, don't worry about doing like minimal three to one, five to one. I use eight to one as a default, but even 15 to one, you, most people can't even see a difference. Yeah, I mean, I remember I was five to one was the lowest I ever went on a red camera. Mm -hmm. And the only time I would ever go three or two to one is when I was zooming in on the sensor, because obviously yeah. the more you zoomed in, you wanted to lower that compression as much as possible. Sure. But that's one of the amazing things about the Ursa Cine 12K LF is even when you go from 12K to 9K to 4K, you are not zooming in on the sensor, correct? 9K is a, is a Super 35 Oh, crop. that's a su Super 35 you crop. 12K, 8K, and 4K. 12K, 8K, 4K. Yep. So if you go 9K, you're doing your Super 35. Mm -hmm. But if I wanted to do 12K, 8K, and 4K, I'm staying large format, I'm not zooming in on the sensor, nope. and that is absolutely amazing because you can, you're able to, 8K, this thing can go how many frames? 224 in uh, widescreen mode. Okay. Um, so that's a popular way to shoot is 8K because you actually get a faster sensor readout as well. So any rolling shutter artifacts you might see are completely minimized or gone. Wow. Because of how fast it is. And I have those numbers, I can pull them up. But. Yeah, yeah, we'll get, we'll get into that when we get to that thing. That's awesome. So we're looking at uh, the bit rate. So what is the bit rate to its, its highest bit rate that they're, you're kicking out? As of with this camera, the Ursa Cine 12K LF, it will max out at four gigabytes per second at the highest, you know, slow-mo setting, minimal compression, largest frame size. Of course, this can do six gigabytes. So it's, it's not even getting close to topping that out. But you know, that's an extreme situation if you're shooting 224, 8K, three to one. Um, I think it's overkill personally, and, and you can test for yourself. But uh, yeah, that's, that's where this camera maxes out is four gigabytes. Well, a lot of times I remember when I first started uh, shooting the Canon 5D, when mm -hmm. I did Active Valor and a lot mm -hmm. of commercials and short films, that camera was 25 to one compression. Yeah. And back when all those cameras were kind of coming out, we had the Sony 900 F950, that was 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. I actually embrace the compression because yeah. it made it more cinematic. Yep. It was kind of almost the gauze yep. where the other video cameras looked just like a video camera. Mm -hmm. They didn't look cinematic. They didn't have that gauze. So yep. I was embracing it. So that's actually one thing to kind of leverage in the compression. And that's mm -hmm. what Dave Cole and I really dive into yeah. is what are the pros and cons mm -hmm. of that compression? Yeah. When we really want to, you know, maybe an extreme look or mm -hmm. how much does it, does it hold together? For sure. Um, so th those are the things that we'll, we'll also go through. I will say that the noise that 
noise is sort of a random pattern. Mm -hmm. And some people actually say it looks filmic, like it's film grain. Right. So not talking about the, the fixed pattern that we had possibly years and years ago. Yes, very but, much so. But as you're talking about texture, this can actually create a little bit of a filmic texture. Just we by actually noise. noticed it when we were looking at our 1600 and everything. It did have a yeah, very nice yeah. texture that was moving. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, cool. All right, so uh, rolling shutter. So let's talk about that. So you're talking about these read speeds of the mm -hmm. sensor are mm -hmm. so intense yeah. that it almost eliminates the rolling shutter. Yeah, so basically the less scanning that has to be done from top to bottom, the faster the readout speed, the less rolling shutter artifacts that you get. Okay. The wobbles, the jellos, the yes, all that. So going from 12K to 8K, you basically cut your sensor readout time in half. So Wow, okay. And you can also go to our friends over at Cinema, uh, Cine D, mm -hmm. where they do an amazing uh, in-depth breakdown on the rolling shutter specifically. And I went through that and I was absolutely blown away with how you were tracking all that and the bit rate and everything. So definitely uh, give our friends over there at Cine D uh, a, a look because they did an excellent uh, job on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are going to um, move on to the compression tests. So we talked about this a little bit. Uh, basically, you can shoot three to one, eight to one, 12, 12 to, one, to one, and 18 to one, correct, correct? Yep. On, on this. And the Ursa Mini is five to, five one. to one, eight to one, 12 to one, and 18 to one. Correct. Correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we want to do now is we're going to dive into these compression tests. So I'm gonna go over to Dave Cole's uh, little um, color correcting area. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through there and we shot all these amazing tests with the compression as well as ISO. So not just doing the, the uh, compression in regards to you know the eight to one versus eight to one and 12 to one versus 12 to one, we're also gonna see how that compression affects when we go to the higher ISOs of 800 and 1600 and 3200 and how much wiggle room and range that Dave's gonna have. All right, Tor, I'll be back in a little okay. bit and uh, we're gonna hit those compression tests and then I'll rejoin Sounds you. Good. Awesome.